Welcome to today's broadcast of Sun, Salt, and Light. Sun, Salt, and Light, S-O-N, knowing and growing in your daily relationship with Jesus Christ, but also being the salt and the light in your marriage, in your family, at your place of work, at your church, and even in the community you're in. I'm Pastor Michael Petit. This is a radio ministry of our church, Calvary Chapel Divine, here in Divine, Texas. We are so glad that you joined us for today's broadcast. We are a Calvary Chapel, so we simply teach the Bible verse by verse, chapter by chapter. We believe that God uses His Word to transform, restore, and to change lives one verse at a time. If you're visiting our area, you'd like to get information about our church or church service times, maybe even track down some of the other teachings that we have available through podcasts, whether it's through Audible or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you can do all of that at our church website at calvarydivine.org. That's calvarydivine.org. But we have eyewitness testimony that's been, been proven. We have the scripture, but we also have prophecy that has been fulfilled. We can point to the prophecy being fulfilled. In Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 it says, But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman under the law. And we know that prophecy was fulfilled in Isaiah 7 14. Therefore the Lord Himself will bring you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and he shall call his name Emmanuel. We even know that Jesus as a baby was going to have to flee to Egypt. It's in Hosea 11 verse 1. My, when Israel was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt, I called my son. We also know about the, the prophetic uh, unfortunate at, uh, death of the Jewish babies by Herod. It was prophesied when Jesus was born. In Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 15, thus says the Lord, a voice is heard in Ramah. Lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel is weeping for her children. She she refuses to be comforted for her children because they are no more. We know that the prophecy was fulfilled that that he would be despised. He would be rejected. He would be turned away in Isaiah 53, uh, 3. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And as one of whom men hide their faces, he was despised and he was esteemed not. We know that he'll come, uh, the Messiah who's like Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 18, 18. I will raise up from them a prophet like you from among their brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. We knew that Jesus was going to be a servant in Isaiah 61, verses 1 and 2. And the Spirit of the Lord God is upon him, upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberties to the captives. And opening of the prisons to those who are bound. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of God. To comfort all who mourn. And we know that he was going to be led like a lamb to the slaughter in Isaiah 53.7. He was oppressed. And he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth like a lamb that is led to the the slaughter, like a sheep uh, that before his shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. And, And there's many more scriptures that we could go over. And because of time, I'm not going to do that because there's a ton of them. But we also know that that as they they brought the colt. Right, And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it. And he sat on it. So this is actually a prophecy that the, the biggest prophecy that's fulfilled. And it's from the book of Daniel. And we discussed this when we we're going through the book of Daniel. It actually deals with the exact day when Daniel in, in chapter 9 verses 24 and 25. When it says the 70 weeks are decreed about your people in your holy city to finish the transgressions to put an end to sin and to atone for the iniquity and to bring an everlasting righteousness to seal both the vision and the prophet and to anoint a holy place. Now therefore understand that from the going out of the word and to restore the building, uh, building, uh, build Jerusalem to the uh, coming of an anointed one, a prince, there shall be seven weeks 
And then for 62 weeks it shall be built again with squares and moats, but in a troubled time. Now we know that that, that scripture is fulfilled actually in Nehemiah chapter 2 verses 1. As we talk about the, the, the year of Nisan when Nehemiah is sent out to go build the walls around Jerusalem. And, and there's a, a mathematician who actually sat down and worked out the math and the years. And, and I won't bore you with the math because it, it bores me. Um, but it's, it's simply this. As, as when you do the math on the number of years from the day of Nisan, it's the exact day that Jesus rides in on the donkey of the colt to the exact day. Now you can't get more precise in a prophecy than that. And so when people tell me they can't believe, it's not that they can't believe. They don't want to believe. They don't want to deal with this. And I was that way. I'm, so I'm, I'm telling you from my viewpoint, that's how I was. I was pridefully in my sin. I didn't want to give up my life. And I knew once that happened, you know, I had to make a choice to either follow or not. So it's better to argue. Even though you can give proof. You can give proof. Um, the thing that's important to understand is as we look at this, as we look at Jesus in control and the Lord has need of it, and we talked about Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, I want you to understand when you think about the, the book that was written is actually from, it's called The Coming Prince, if you want to look it up. The Coming Prince by Sir Robert Anderson. By Sir Robert Anderson. And he, when he did the calculations, it was a, a hundred, a 173,880 days exactly to the very day. And it was March 14th, 445 B.C. to April 6, 32 A.D. And, it's, and it corrected for the leap years because in Jewish calendar, they didn't have that stuff. And, but, but when he did it, it was the exact, the exact Sunday that Jesus rode in on the donkey. So anybody tells you that the Bible is not true, they need to read the Scriptures. They need to see that it was fulfilled. The Lord has need of it. When we look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, and I want to share this with you real quick. It's, it's very important as you read that piece of Scripture in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 10, and uh, as it talks about you are prepared for good works. I was talking to a pastor, Pastor Dan uh, Yurte from uh, Prevailing Word this past Thursday. And, and we, he has a cross, a big cross, right up there by, by Lytle. And, and the light went out. Now the light, he says, is a very expensive bulb. To replace, and somebody had suggested, hey, let's do LED lights. Right? They'll last longer, they're less expensive, and let's light it up with LED. And so somebody came in, they had a work day, and they, they, they did the work, and they got all the way to the bottom to plug it in, and it didn't reach. So now they need an electrician. Right? So they stopped couple days go by and he's like I don't think I'm gonna have to hire an electrician to come out and he's you know you know when you do doing things for God and you don't see it you're ready to quit sometimes and and it happens but then some somebody came and and they were like um, what's wrong with the lights and he told him he goes well we need power to run and we're gonna have to f rework the electric and he goes let me get my ladder I'll take care of it and so the guy took care of it and so the cross lit up. Sunday night, or actually Monday night, they had service Sunday, so they had the cross lit up Sunday. And the worst part is, is he has like a remote for the, uh, for the LED lights now, and he couldn't find the remote. It took him almost four hours to find the remote because he had put it somewhere so he wouldn't lose it. You know, and, you know, pastors with a million things on their mind, we forget where things are at sometimes. So he looked for it. Took him a while, but he looked for it and found it. So that Monday night, there was a young man that was walking into Lytle um, and was homeless, and he was going to throw himself in front of an 18-wheeler. And for a moment, he turned and saw the cross lit up, and he decided to keep walking up the hill. And he said, the, the, uh, Dan said the thing that stood out to him was 
how the enemy goes after you. He said, the whole time he's walking, almost every step, why don't you just do what you were going to do? The church is not open on a Monday. Why would you think somebody would be there? Just go ahead and do what you're going to do. He goes to the door and opens the door and they have men's study on Sunday, on Monday night. And he was welcomed in. He was loved on. Dan got him a room. Afterwards, he found out he was homeless. And then they got him the next day, got him set. Turns out he was a vet. A uh, very smart guy. And he told Dan the story about what happened. About how he was going to kill himself. And, and you think that the Lord had need of that cross. And how many things happen within just set up or when we do events that is so easy to quit but God has prepared good works for you and he goes you know at the end of the day he goes man when that at first when the bulb went out just change the bulb and then it became LEDs and then after that couldn't get out and he's like oh, I guess I'm gonna have to get an electrician and he goes there were so many things that would have made me quit and I wanted to quit but I couldn't, couldn't. I, I just needed to get it done. And he goes, I had no clue that cross would help somebody that night. And that's the same thing that the radio does. It goes out. You know, you know you will, you'll have no impact or have no idea the impact that it'll have here. You'll know when you get to heaven. But it's a, remi a reminder that the Lord has need of it. That means he has need of you. Because he's prepared you for good works. And he is in control. So don't get defeated. When you're stepping out to do something. Any ministry. Anything you do for God. It's going to be. that The devil is going to try everything he can. To stop you from doing it. Everything. But you got to turn those voices off. And turn up God. And just keep moving step by step. And, and uh, you know. Praise God that, that that young man saw the cross. He was an only, only child. He lost both his mom and dad within a year of cancer. Both of them got cancer. So he went from having family to no family. Lost a, a child uh, at stillbirth. His wife. Just uh, devastated him. And so he, just, he was going through a lot. And that lit up cross. Because of what it represents is Jesus. God still saves in amazing ways, and we need to remember that. The next thing we see as we close this out is Jesus worshipped in verses 8 through 11. And many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches, and they cut, had cut from the fields. And so we, again, we know there's about 2 to 3 million people that are here at Passover. Uh, they would have been throwing their cloaks down. They would have been grabbing palm trees. That's why we call it Palm Sunday. So you can imagine, like, after this, there's probably no palm trees <laughs> that are available in Jerusalem at this point. Uh, but they're, they're, they come, when they come to Jerusalem, anybody who goes to Jerusalem, even today, they're anticipating to hear from God. Because that is God's nation. And Jerusalem is His capital. So when you see nations going up against Israel, that's not going to end well. At all. At all. Because it's God's nation. It's still God's nation. And, and so we, we see that the, the, the two to three million people are coming in with the anticipation to hear something from God. And that should be our way every Wednesday and Sunday. Are you anticipating on hearing something from the Lord? Not Mike. So one of the things that we need to make clear of is like when we talk about things of Scripture, you could be mad at me all day long, but you're not mad at me. You're mad at the Word of God. That little girl who killed those six individuals, she was in counseling with the pastor. And what she was mad at was what she heard was not what she wanted to hear, but it was from God's Word. So not only does she try to kill the pastor, but she can't find the pastor, so she killed the daughter. How sick is that? That's demonic. 
But we should be coming to church anticipating to hear from God. So when somebody doesn't agree with something that comes from the Word of God, they're not upset with you. They're upset with God. And so don't take it personal. If they get mad at you, you go, hey, brother, I, I love you. I'm just sharing what God's Word says. If you're upset, I, I'm not trying to upset you. This is what the Word of God says. And this is what it says about it. Pastors, we get it all the time. But what I love is Jesus comes in with humility. He's on an, an, an unbroken beast, but not a horse, a war horse. Because if, if you think about it, when, when they would come in on, on animals for the Roman Empire, they would come in with all the spoils of the war, right? I don't know how many of y'all have seen, um, what's that movie, Aladdin? Like when, when Prince, of whatever his name is, when he comes in, he comes in with all the elephants and the treasure and the people dancing. That's how the Romans came in. When Jesus comes in, he comes in lowly and humble on a colt, a donkey. With humility. Now when he returns, oh Lord, the lion returns. And all those people that are, oh, he's a loving God. Oh, the wrath of God is coming. See, we think it's bad right now. Wait till the church is raptured. Like you have a picture right now of how bad it is in America. Wait till the church is raptured. It is going to get bad. You don't want to be here when all that goes down. But he comes in in humility. And John 12, 13 gives us confirmation about the palm trees. It says, so they took branches of palm trees. Palm trees. Now, you know, when you study Scripture, I don't remember Muhammad ever riding a, a war horse or riding in to, uh, to, be, to be worshipped. No, Muhammad either did this. He'd come into Mecca. He came in with soldiers. And if you didn't convert, he killed everybody. Not humble. Very prideful. And that's what the Muslim faith is. Jesus was, was, uh, was a representation of humility. He was a representation of humility. In Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 through 16, it says, Then I saw an open, and behold, a white horse, and the one who's sitting on it is called Faithful and True. And the righteousness he judges and makes war. So everybody who says Jesus is love, he makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are the diadems, and he is, his name is written that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and the name by which he is called the Word of God. And the army is of the heaven, arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, and follow him on white horses. From the mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down nations, which goes back to the Psalm 2. Right? He's going to break them like rods, like potter's vessels. And he will rule them with the rod of iron. He, tread, he, he will tread the winepress of the fury of the, uh, of the wrath of God, the Almighty. And on the robe and on his thigh, he has, he has his name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. He came humbly as the lamb. He's coming back as the lion. And he comes to make war with the nations. His second coming is coming. And people will say, oh, I don't, you know, we've been, y'all, y'all been saying that forever. No, he's coming. He's coming. But I love his humility. And that's what we're called to be as, as Christ followers as well. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 and 5, it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. But blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. Jesus was a humble servant. We are to be humble servants. Verse 9, it says, And though, uh, those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. So as the cloaks are being put down, as the palm trees are being put down, worship begins. And two to three million people are worshiping Jesus. This is the first public display of worship that Christ has allowed. 
And it's the only. Because it has to fulfill prophecy and Scripture. It's an important reminder to us is that, that, that even at this moment, God is being worshipped. At this very moment. So when we come in to, to worship, it's the same for us. And, and, and to, to, in Psalm 118, verses 25 and 26 says, Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. You can sing that scripture. It's so beautiful because at the end of the day, it's like that's the, the thing that we have to remember. There are two to three million people crying out, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. And, the, and they're, they're anticipating. And some are anticipating a king that's going to take over Rome. And that's not the king that's coming. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, but uh, Lord of Lords. But He is the, the the humble Lamb of God who will sacrifice Himself at the cross for the sins of the world. And that the religious leaders get upset at this moment. They get angry. And they want Him to to make them stop. Tell them to stop worshiping. In Luke chapter 19, verses 39 and 40, it says, And the Pharisees and the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. And he, and he answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. And can I tell you, creation has been crying out since Adam and Eve fell. It cries out constantly. Groaning to worship God. Even creation. And he headed to the temple. And Jesus in, in verse, verse 11 says, And he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, it was already late. And he went out to Bethany with the twelve. And, and when I read that, one of the things I'm reading is I'm like, he's, all of this worship is happening. And they're, they're heading into the temple, and what do the people want? Take over. Let's destroy Rome. And so what does he do? Oh, no. We're, we're out. We're, we're, it's late. We're going to head back to Bethany. That's why he does that. Because they're still, at this point, looking for a king earthly. They're still looking for an earthly king to rule for them. They missed it. And this, this same crowd who's crying Hosanna in the highest will say crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. The same crowd will get a choice between Barabbas a murderer and Jesus. And who do they choose? It's the same decision that's happening today. People are given the choice of, of being a follower of God or not. And they're choosing, I'll go ahead and choose this lifestyle, I'll choose this, this sin instead of following God. Michael Youssef said this, a king, king Jesus rode into Jerusalem not to conquer the city like an earthly king, but to conquer your heart and mind. He comes to conquer the heart. That's what Jesus comes for. He comes to conquer the heart. So we think about that just for a little bit as, as, as you think about worshiping. Two to three million people worshiping. I think that's why it's so, we're so enamored when we see revival. We keep asking the question about revival. Steve, can you go get the, uh, the kids and the youth for me? And we keep asking about revival, right? And the questions of revival. Because we see in Asbury, we see people worshiping. Passionately worshiping God. And you go, why, why, why do we get enamored by that? Because we don't see it. We don't see it. 
And, and, and so for me, when I read Psalm 118, 25 and 26, save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. That's a prayer. You can pray that. You can pray that. It's a beautiful piece of scripture. And, and at the end of the day, it's like, man, don't we want success? It only comes from a, a God that's in control. Right? We put our trust in, in a God that's in control. You know, one of the things I love about yesterday is just seeing the amount of people that one man of obedience can can impact one man being obedient to god and doing what god had called him to do had impacted all these people on earth we think about chuck pastor chuck and and just the obedience that chuck had and and just the impact that god used that one man because he was obedient to what god had called him to do and so when I read these scriptures, yes, Jesus should be control, in control of your life. But don't stop worshiping him. Don't come in. You know how you come in sometimes? You don't feel like being here. I've been at church before where I'm like, man, I just didn't want to get up this morning. I don't feel good. My body's aching. I'm struggling to, to move today. And you come in and worship starts and you're just kind of, you're just like, ah, oh, praise God. And you're just, you're just kind of like, ah, and then, then worship gets going and your heart starts. Uh, one of the things that somebody said yesterday is God begins to massage the heart and get, starts working the things out. That's what Jim would always say is God's massaging the heart continually and getting those things that need to be put out, out. And that's what worship does. We come in and God starts massaging the heart. And you come in all disgruntled. <laughs> You've had a bad week. Right? And then worship begins and it just starts washing away. And, and I just think to myself, you know, that you know, when, we, when we enter into heaven and we'll, we'll, we'll be worshiping God. And, and, and it's such a beautiful piece of scripture that we read. Hosanna in the highest. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get ready to take communion. And um, I want to do this. So, so I know we have some families that are at home watching. And so if you want to get um, it's very easily done, you grab some crackers, grab some juice at the house. You can, and if you're one of the guys there, you're going, I'm the husband. I don't know how to do this. You can do it. Because Kurt's fixing to do it for us. So Kirk and Tony, y'all can go ahead and. And, and get ready to pass out communion. So what's going to happen is they're going to come around and pass out the elements to you. But communion is for believers. And so if there's somebody watching this or listening to this and you go, man, I haven't chosen to follow Jesus Christ. Jesus is not in control of my life. And you want to have that. You want to have that, that understanding that it's your sin that separates you from God. And you go, well, I'm not a sinner. Uh, we are. All of us are, including me. Um, and, and, and to understand that Jesus loves you, Jesus forgives you, and Jesus wants a relationship with you. And it doesn't matter where you're at in your life. Just like that man walking at nighttime, seeing the cross, and was ready to kill himself, and then God got a hold of him. God got a hold of him. And, and so we want to give you the opportunity to do that now. And so if you want to, everybody just bow your heads. And if you want to receive Christ... Um, whether you're hearing this on the radio later on or you're watching this online, we just want to give you the opportunity to choose to follow Jesus Christ, to have your sins forgiven, um, and, and to, to get right with God. Um, so just pray this prayer after me. Father God, I come before you. I am a sinner. Lord, I need a Savior. I believe you died, rose, and was resurrected. And you died for our sins so that we could be forgiven. I confess I'm a sinner. 
I ask you to come into my heart to take residence there. To fill me with the Holy Spirit. To guide my life. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, that concludes today's broadcast of Sun, Salt, and Light Radio. We hope that you enjoyed it. If you'd like to submit a prayer request or get in contact with us or find out service times, you can do all of that at our website, uh, as well as get uh, our podcast at Spotify, Audible, TuneIn Radio. Pretty much wherever you can find a podcast, uh, you, you can just type in Sun, Salt, and Light, and you'll find it. 